Time right now for our political plays of the week. We'd like to invite Democrat analyst Michael John Gray and Republican analyst Bill Vickery joining us this morning. Great to see you guys. First off, uh, you know, we talked about several uh, stories happening in, um, at our nation's capital right now. One of them is President Biden's proposed $1.9 trillion rescue bill. So GOP senators, they're offering an alternative plan, but there is talks that Democrats have said that they're going to basically just try to bypass the GOP so they can get some sort of resolution and and relief to our nation and to our Americans sooner rather than later. Where do you think that this all stands and, and how soon we can see something happen? It needs to happen soon. It needs to happen real soon. The, the pushback in Washington is one's too small, one's too big. But look, we're, we're in an emergency situation. It's time to get things done. You don't bail out a boat with a thimble. You go all in. The economists are saying the risk of too small a package is a big problem and the president's pushing um, one that he really thinks will make a difference, and hopefully you'll see enough Republicans to come to the table to make it work. If not, I think they've got the votes to get it through as soon as we can. Bill? Yeah, I, I think, uh, again, this is a little bit of sort of the classic federal National Democratic Party. I mean, just throw a lot more money at the situation as opposed to putting money into areas that can help really fix the problem. And so instead of just overwhelming something with money, which we've already done twice, by the way, we're talking about trying to provide some real strategic relief in areas, for, especially for small business, that can have an impact that cascades down. And so, uh, I mean, look, it's a shocker of shockers. We talk about unity and then we just decide to do it in a partisan fashion. That's not the first time that this ever happened in Washington, won't be the last. Joe Biden's no different than anybody else. Uh, he, he wants to get his way, so he's gonna have to rely on Democrats. The real problem becomes for guys like Joe Manchin in. Uh, West Virginia and the, the Senate trial in uh, uh, Arizona, they have to take tough votes now that will be unpopular in their home state. And I don't know if they're up to that. Let's talk more about raising the minimum wage, the federal minimum wage, to $15 an hour. So Arkansas just raised the minimum wage to $11 an hour this year. So if President Biden's proposal is approved, what do you think that would mean for our state's employees and economy? Well, so Florida just also passed their past one at 15. The federal minimum wage at 725. This is such a talking point, especially those that are against it. The proposal is over five years. I, I can remember getting paid minimum wage and it was 280. I promise you nobody wants to make 280 today. So at some point it's got to be increased. This is a the plan that's out there now is a five year adjustment to it. It means a lot. I mean, uh, the people scream that, oh, $15 will cost a lot of small business jobs, uh, McDonald's workers. Well, the CEO of McDonald's makes somewhere around 15 to $18 million, but nobody screams that that's too much money and that puts McDonald's workers out of work. $15 on a gradual amount of time. You're still talking about less than $30,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Go make rent, go make a car payment, pay your groceries and pay your utility bill on less than 30,000. There's not a lot of money there. So over five years, I, it, it scares people that initial number, but if they really do the math, it, it's helpful to the economy in the long run. That trickles up, as Bill would say. Targeted places, help small businesses, help small. Um, there's got to be an exemption for those that don't have enough employees. Mm -hmm. When you start talking about the Walmarts, the Tysons out there, rises all boats when you put more money into the people that spend it. it it's, nice, it's nice to talk about big corporations that are public companies that have deep pockets. We're talking about uh, small businesses that have 15, 20, 50 employees, something like that, that are multi-generational businesses. Exactly the same business that has been devastated by the government's reactions to the pandemic are exactly the same businesses that get hurt by this, phased in over five years or not. They have to factor that in. And so as, as a reality, look, we're talking also about the majority of people, look this up, it's coming from the NFIB. The majority of the people who have minimum wage jobs, that's a second job for them. That's supplemental to their income because they are things like school teachers and, and people like that. So the reality becomes it's a nice talking point to say, hey, we should raise the minimum wage and help these people. But the very people they should be helping are the small business owners. And in the, in the midst of the devastation that we're in now, now we come in with a baseball bat and just and, uh, and take out the place. It, it doesn't. The, the timing on this okay, doesn't. Maybe, maybe. Three years, three years before that minimum wage would even get as high as it is in Arkansas. So there's no baseball back coming to Arkansas. And, and let's be real. Hey guys, I, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Years. Come on. I've got to wrap this up. I thank you so much, uh, Michael, John, and Bill, for joining us on Political Plays this morning. We'll have much more time next Monday. We'll be right back.